Yo, what is up, guys? It's your host, the uh, one and only Sage D Samurai here, coming at you another part two. What if Asta had Mihawk sword skills? Uh, thank you guys for tuning into this. What if? Because I already know that you guys are amazing, but I just wanted to let you guys know that. Yeah, sorry. It's just the fact that I've done this intro so many times. I I, I want to spike it up a little bit more, but don't know how. Who knows? But anyway, once again, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Hope you had a lovely day. Hope you guys will enjoy this what if. And besides that, once again, thank you very much. And let's begin. You're never gonna make it. You're not good enough. There's a million other people with the same stuff. You really think you're different, and you must be kidding. Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it. It's impossible. It's not probable. You're irresponsible. Too many obstacles. You gotta stop it, yo. You gotta take it slow. You can't be a pro. Don't waste your time no more. Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? All right, guys. Let's get started with this what if with a quick flashback. So the last part where we left off, Asta had pretty much just had pretty much got an eye-opening moment, as pretty much during the time where the kingdom was under attack, Asta really realized his limits. As the leader of the Eyes of the Midnight Sun pretty much made Asta feel inferior to the point where he had to rely on his other personality to do something. So to make sure that never happens again, Asta had promised himself that he would train harder than he ever did before to surpass his other self and fully become the version of him that he wants to be. And he does exactly just that. During the time of his entire time of training, Asta trains himself to the point where he meets Libei. He pretty much merges with his other self pretty much, gaining all type of sword techniques and everything. And he's on like a totally different level. Now he would still go with Finro to the brothel that they went to. And it did eventually end up in failure like last time, except this time, you know, Asta, you know, actually did something. So yeah, there's that happened. However, besides all that, we skipped forward to the point where pretty much Rebecca as well as most of the kids in the area had gotten abducted by some unknown force. Asta, instantly catching up to wherever this person was, would instantly go there accompanied by the sister of said area. As we now turn to the present where we see Asta now being faced down by the three, no, four leaders of the Eye of the Midnight Sun. As this is where we're going to start the what if. At this, Asta now surrounded will actually look an amused expression as you will see both Veto and Fauna who are staring down at Licht, who is currently pretty injured. Seeing his comrade injured, Veto will be angry as and says, you puny human dare touch Licht? As Fauna would make a comment saying that she was going to burn Asta alive for this, to which Asta goes ahead and smirks. Bring it on then. At this, Veto, not even caring about the invitation, had instantly jumped as he would go ahead and swing a beast claw at Asta's face. At this, Asta would easily lean back, dodging the attack, as to Asta, this attack was actually fairly slow, thanks to the effect of Observation Hockey as well as Key. However, this is when Ryu would then appear behind him, as, as it seems as if he uses Licked Magic, to which Asta would analyze, thinking that maybe both him and Licked have the same magic, as he would swing at Asta with a light sword. However, Asta would easily block with his anti-magic one, easily destroying it with his, you know, katana, as he slices at Raya, to which he was able to get away using light itself. At this, just as both Veto and Raya would jump away, this is when Fauna would then shoot a ginormous blazing inferno at Asta, to which Asta goes ahead and cuts it down with an anti-magic slash. Now this slash was so powerful, it actually surprised all of them by cutting through the ginormous flamethrower that Fauna threw out, as she nearly gets cut due to it. But either way, after jumping away, each one of them will all have the same thoughts, saying that Asta was strong. While Asta was sitting there with an amused expression as he was enjoying the look on their faces. At this, Asta realizing that these people were actually no joke and that he actually might have to get serious for this one would then smirk. Finally, it's been a while since I've been actually been able to test out this new power of mine. You all will be excellent test subjects. At this, hearing this would just piss them all off. However, this is when suddenly Asta's blade would then begin to shoot out a ginormous dark, like a ginormous amount of anti magic as he was calmly staring each one of them down. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of inside information on this. So, when Asta and Libe had sort of formed their friendship together, Asta had, and Libe had came up with a new way of fighting. Because you see, Asta's not really liking the ginormous and blunt blades of the regular Demon Slayer swords. So, to find a way to fix that, Asta and Libe had combined each one of them together. That's right, so that means Asta had combined the powers of the Demon Slayer sword and the Demon Dweller sword each one of them combined into Asa's one katana that now has the power to one, reflect magic, and two, absorb magic. But also it caused a trigger reaction, as this would actually cause the dormant ability of Asa's katana to awaken. 
as this is when suddenly Asa would then vanish right before each one of the members eyes as he would appear right behind Beto and come at him with a slash from on his back. The slash would instantly connect causing Beto to be sent flying and crashing into a wall surprising the other members. However as Beto goes ahead and gets out of there smiling perfectly as he was very durable this is when suddenly he would then try to use his magic only to scream out in the most painful way possible. At this, the others could not believe their eyes while Lit is literally screaming at Raya's name, trying to get him to snap out of it. However, Raya can do nothing more but begin to pant as he feels he's in immense amount of pain. You see, by merging the powers of the Demon Dweller Sword and the Demon Slayer Sword together into Asa's Katana, it awakened the dormant ability, which I decided to actually, you know, go with this one because honestly, I think it fit well with it. But either way, it's known as Distortion. So pretty much, whenever Asta lands an anti-magic attack, or literally just lands in a hit with his katana, he has the ability to literally make it to where the user's magic can backfire on them. It can warp the control of it. For example, if you try to use magic when you have like an, a dark anti-magic slash on you, number one, that magic is going to go ahead and be used against you. And if you even try to force your way to try to go through it, I mean it is possible, but the sad thing is that you're going to be experiencing so much pain that you're gonna have to have a lot of pain tolerance if you want to survive. So, yeah, this is a pretty OP ability. But back to the story. When the other members are worrying for Veto's condition, this is when Ryo would in turn only to duck from a Katana Slash from Asta, which was so powerful it destroyed the rock that was right behind him. As he was dodging, he's just thinking that he's fast too. As he goes ahead and tries to warp away using Lick's magic that he copied, However, just as he seemed to just as he seemed to you know disappear and get safely away from Asta, this is when Asta would actually appear right behind him. Too slow. As this is when suddenly he would then land a slash on Raya, but this time it actually goes on his shoulder, causing an anti-magic slash to hit it, as well as weaken his ability to use magic. As he goes ahead and grits his teeth in pain, he goes and tries to use magic to try to get away once again. However, not only was it weaker, but it also backfired on him easily, as due to the fact of Asta's ability of distortion, he couldn't control his magic anymore. However, just as Asta was about to continue fighting him, this is when he would have to dodge a ginormous flaming ball that was getting sent flying towards him by Fauna. She was angry that her comrades were taking so much injuries, and she wanted revenge. However, this is when suddenly she would also begin to reveal Salamander, which yeah, I'm gonna make her like reveal it much sooner this time. So yes, she reveals Salamander as she shoots off ginormous flamethrowers at Asta, burning the place up a lot as well as increasing the temperatures. At this, Asta would have no choice to dodge this, which was not that hard for him considering the attacks were, although pretty fast, were not fast enough that Asta could not dodge it. As well as the fact that Asta had Observation Hockey as well as Key, there was not really much that she could do to beat him at this point. However, as Asta was dodging though, this one suddenly he would have to duck a light sword, as this one coming from Lick, who was tired of seeing his comrades get injured as well, as he tried to back them up, even though he was very low on magic right now. But hey. But this one suddenly, Asta would then smirk, as he was dodging the attacks, he would then see a ginormous flamethrower approaching him, as he would actually just simply not dodge this time. In fact, he would just point his katana directly at the flamethrower. At this, the other smile in satisfaction as the flames hit Asta, as they think they were finally done with him, only to be in shock as the flames were completely absorbed into his katana. At this, the others could not believe it, as Asta would then smirk, as this one suddenly he would then disappear and appear above Lick, as he then tells him that this is the power of your comrades, and you should feel it as well. As this one suddenly he would then slice downwards, as the flames from the sword would then be shot directly at Lick, who gets hit by the flames on the back. At this, Fauna would actually look at Asta in surprise as well as hatred, however she was also beginning to feel conflicted. As she thought that Asta was the one that hurt Lick, but at the same time, Asta used her magic to hurt him. So that means she also hurt Lick. She was sort of in conflict right now, she couldn't really think properly, which is why Asta was able to get behind her just in time, as well as land a powerful anti-magic slash directly on her shoulder as well, just like Raya. At this, as Asta does so, he will also use distortion, pretty much causing her to scream out in pain, as she had tried to use magic to try to shoot it at Asta, However, it backfired on her. The members of the Eye of the Midnight Sun realized just how bad their situation were. Because now, like, let me just go ahead and run down the whole situation right now. Number one, if they try to use magic, that's going to backfire on them hard. Another thing was the fact that Asta had the ability to pretty much 
you know, take any attack they dealt at him that was magic, absorb it into his katana, and use it against them. So there's that. As well as they haven't, they haven't even seen Asa's ability about, you know, reflecting magic, but he's already able to absorb it and shoot it right back at them. So, yeah, Asa is pretty broken right now. And there's not really much I can see them doing at this point. Another thing, just to let you guys know, is the fact that Asta, well, no, the I, the members of the Eye of the Night Sun had underestimated Asta because he had no magic. Sure, he may have been able to take it down Lake, but they thought it was a fluke. So now they're regretting the decision. Just wanted to let you guys know. But moving on, the members are realizing just how bad the situation was, as this is when Asta would then see it's eye opening, isn't it? He would say as he puts the katana back into his sheath, as he begins to calmly walk over to Licht, who is still on the ground. It's hard to believe that the same person that you look down upon is the same person who's going to be ending all of you real soon, Asta would say. As he walks to Licht's body, which was currently unconscious, seeing their leader in danger, Veto would charge at Asta. However, due to the fact that Veto is not exactly technically human, as well as the fact that his body was much more superior than humans currently, he was able to speed up towards Asta enough time to actually get a swing on him, only for Asta to dodge, as well as actually swing using the dull part of the blade on Veto's shoulder, actually dislocating it. At this, Veto would scream out in pain once again as he falls onto his knees. As is when Asta would then put a katana directly at Veto's neck, as he then says, Fine, if you're that eager, then I'll start with you. As this one also would actually swing using an anti-magic slash, preparing to end Veto's life right then and there. However, this is when Fauna, who is still in pain, would actually scream out even more as she shoots off a miniature fireball, barely enough to actually, like, I would say, it would give you, like, a small little burn that you guys get, like, if you put your hand on a stove, like, yeah, it would probably burn you like that. As Asta would actually have to dodge the attack. At this, Fauna had pretty much endured a lot of pain just to shoot off the attack, as it was enough that Veto was actually able to grab Licked and jump off. So with that, they were now all safe distance away from Asta, however that did not stop Asta as he turns to them and continues walking. As their fate was, in his eyes, inevitable, they were not going to escape him, for sure. As Raya, who currently right now was honestly just, he couldn't do much either, and the fact that he knows that Asta was toying around with them was something that he honestly just, he did not expect this. As he looks at Licht as well as the others who currently right now were actually showing signs of feeling actual fear for this man, he would have no choice but to tap in into his magic. Now this man had to go through extreme amount of pain throughout his body as it hurt a lot. However, luckily he was able to get enough, enough control over his magic to open a big enough portal for each one of them. At this also would see as Raya would of course fall unconscious due to the fact that his body could not handle the pain anymore. However, his magic was still up though as he had created the small portal and it was closing at a very rapid pace. Seeing the portal as well as seeing the opportunity, Veto would use every last bit of his strength to jump over to Raya as well as Fauna and try to escape. At this also wouldn't smirk. You really think I'm going to allow you to escape? As this one also wouldn't charge up a ginormous anti-magic slash as the area was getting filled with just anti-magic causing you know Veto to get weaker and weaker but he was not giving up as he ends up getting um, Raya who is still unconscious as well as he ends up getting Fauna as well as he rushes towards the portal. As also due to the fact of Asta's anti-magic kicking in, the portal was closing even faster causing Raya to have no choice, I mean Veto to have no choice but to jump. At this, there was nothing but silence, as this is when Asta would then slice down with a ginormous anti-magic slash, which would actually look like the Getsu Ga Tencho from Bleach, from Ichigo. At this, as Vegeta was preparing to jump through the portal, he would see the attack coming as he, was, as he would throw the bodies of pretty much the rest of the members. However, as he was able to save them, he was not able to save himself. As Vegeta got hit with the full blunt of the attack, causing him to instantly be killed. However, his body still went through the portal just in time, as just as Asa's slash had finished, it cut through the portal as well, as it was completely destroyed. Luckily, all the members got away, however, however Veto was still dead, so yeah. This was definitely an L for the Eye of the Midnight Sun. At this, Asta would look at the direction they went from the portal, as he can do nothing more but sigh, but honestly, he was not worried. He let them go, because honestly, if Asta wanted to, he could literally just finish them off. Like I said, Asta's been training himself intensely, to the point where he's now able to face off against 
three members of the Eye of the Midnight Sun easily. So he's going to go ahead and give them a chance. Why not? Besides, he already took down one of their members, so it's honestly not going to matter. At this, Asa would of course put his katana back into his sheath just as the portal would then open up to reveal Finro as well as the Magic Knight captains who had come to help Asta only to realize the fight was done. At this, Asta would then turn to the machine and says, you're late. To which Yami would then say, damn kid, looks like you surpassed your limits. As to honestly, it looked like an entire war zone in the entire cave because literally there was a bunch of destruction and honestly, yeah, it just looked like a, an all out battle, like an all out battle went out here. But hey, moving forward, we would eventually see all the children had returned back to their parents. As each one of them were happy, Rebecca got her kids back as well. She thanked Asta very much for the help. Asta, of course, was okay with it and everything, while the captains were left to investigate the area as they needed to find a way, like, you know, find out if they had any missing clues or anything. So that way they can go ahead and take it back to the Wizard King. While Asta decides to return back into the village to see if anything had gone bad, Luckily, everyone was safe and sound, and the children were all okay, luckily. Asta also had to give a report to the Wizard King, because that event were a lot. However, he decided he was going to take care of that later. Another thing was the fact that Rebecca still gives Asta the smooch as she thanks him for, you know, saving the kids and everything, just like in canon. So, pretty much, everything goes well. Well, almost everything. To say that Asta disliked Ghosh, would be an understatement this man literally left the lives of multiple children like i understand about caring for the ones that you love and everything but you could have literally stayed there and fought with asta so that way both of you guys can protect the children like he could literally have done that due to that whenever asta has his eyes like looking at gauche or whenever he even sees gauche he only puts on a calm he doesn't even put on a common neutral expression he's literally a motionless face that's it another thing was the fact that he gave the look of pity and disgust in his eyes as he was stared down at Ghosh. As honestly, that's all he could really feel for him. Eventually, though, also does return back to the kingdom as well as he gives the report to which Jews would actually announce to everyone about the idea of a traitor in their midst. At this, this would cause everyone to be suspicious. However, also already having the ability to read key as well as the fact that his observation hockey would then instantly say that he already knows who it is. At this, Judas was actually impressed by this as well as the other captains, as this one also wouldn't point to the captain of the purple orca, saying that it was him. At this, he would of course instantly deny the claims, however, sadly, things were not on his side, so he decides to make a run for it. However, he didn't get very far as Oz had instantly appeared, literally instantly appeared in front of him and sliced down with an anti-magic slash, knocking him out. This was to impress everyone as Oz had instantly taken care of the job. As this is when Julius would actually tell Asa and Yami something in private, as after that meeting was done, he had pretty much told him about a mission to go to the underwater temple and to try to find these stones that they seemed to be looking for, aka the, mem the members of the Eye of the Midnight Sun. At this already hearing about this mission, Asa as well as Yami would instantly agree to this mission as they all decide to prepare for this mission to the underwater temple. Now, this mission which shall be sped through instantly. I will say that Asta and, and you know, Noel train each other. Because, you know, Asta is pushing Noel to learn the, you know, how to control her magic and everything. But I would just say this. The reason why this art is not really that important in this timeline is the fact that Veto does not make an appearance. Veto is already dead. All right. Asta had already ended him. So, honestly, there's no threat that, that could really appear at this time. Like, sure, I could say, like, another member of the Eye of the Midnight Sun appears. But, sadly, right now, even that wouldn't work. As Lect is pretty injured right now. Uh, Raya, still injured as well. In fact, he's sort of been unconscious. So far, the only one who's been able to decently operate was Fauna. But she is still pretty injured as well. So, already, three members down. Not really much that they can do, so... Honestly, this arc goes simply with Noel eventually learning how to control her magic properly, as well as the fact they go over there, they face off against each other in a contest, which the Black Bulls had easily won, and they eventually end up getting the underwater temple thanks to being found by Nero. So, with that being said, we can now move on forward. But also, I'd like to mention that during these arcs, as well as during these times, Asta continued getting stronger and stronger, as that's just Asta's way of becoming, well, stronger is easily. As Asa and Libe have been sort of secretly been working on something that's going to be revealed real soon. Another thing is the fact that Asta has, um, Asta has pretty much beginning to unlock more and more of his abilities. That being the abilities of hockey, 
as not only does he have more control over pretty much you know all the versions of hockey observation armament and conquerors but it's also another thing and that is the fact that also begins to learn the advanced versions yep that's right as also begins to actually get a feel for them Due to the fact that, well, he has been training himself really hard, as well as the fact he's been taking a lot of the missions that the Black Bulls do not go on, that just like stay there on the wall like waiting, he usually just takes those missions and then just goes off. So I wouldn't say Asa is instantly like a master at like hockey, but I would say that he's learning the advanced versions and he's able to do them not as good as he's usually able to do like armament hockey as well as like the other basic versions quite simply. But he's able to hold it long enough to where at least he'll be able to use it like three or like two times during a fight. So, yeah, there's that. Another thing was the fact that due to Asa's growth and strength and pretty much in everything that he's been doing, the Black Bulls had actually requested for Asa's help in getting stronger. Now by Black Bulls, I mean Magma, Luck, and Noel as they have sort of felt beginning to feel inferior to Asta due to the fact that he's always pushing himself even more as well as the fact that he was literally leaps and bound already ahead of them even though he did not have any bit of magic at this Asta thinks about it only for a little bit as he agrees to this of course as he would actually train Magma, Noel, and Luck pretty much giving them like different training regimens, ideas, theories pretty much everything that can help them get, become stronger and it does end up working now, if you guys want an idea about how strong these guys have already become, like I had already become at this point, I would say that they were already as strong as they were during the Elf arc. So that means Luck already has like his, the like the lightning armor that he got in like in the Elf arc. Noelle had already learned how to do the, you know, the Valkyrie armor, although she still is not able to hold it for a very long time. She's holding it enough to where she's able to use it for like, I would say, mm, I would say like three minutes. After that, she's not able to hold it anymore. Magma is already learning about his, you know, fire trap magic, and it's actually working out for him really well, as he was able to create a bunch of cool ideas. So, yeah, all of them are already at the elf arc level. As we now turn to when pretty much we'll see the exact same group that went to the kingdom in canon go to the team, go to the kingdom, which was pretty much Yami, Asta, Finroll, and I think Charmy? Yeah, it was Charmy, yeah as they all had decided to go to the kingdom along with Asta. Also, I'm just going to throw Noel in there as well. So, pretty much they all decided to go there to the kingdom upon Yami's orders due to the fact they had to give a report about the underwater temple. At this, the report was quite easy since not much really happened there. They just had to play a game, then win, then gain the magic stone. So yeah, not really much happened. However, this one suddenly they didn't be attacked by the diamond kingdom. As they all begin to cheer and everything, this one Asta, who's currently right there just, you know, giving the report and everything, would actually see and sense them coming. As this went faster than even Julius can even see, Asta would appear at the center of town, on top of a building. At this, everyone who was actually here, you know, seeing the Diamond Kingdom attacking, would actually see Asta appear out of nowhere, as this one Asta would then crouch down, bending on down on one knee, as this one he will unsheath his sword. At this, the Diamond Kingdom mages would try throwing an attack at Asta. However, to their absolute shock, Asta would absorb the attacks, all of them, easily into his katana. As this when Asta would then say, pathetic. As he would then shoot the attack right back at them, except this time it was much more stronger. At this, the Diamond Kingdom mages could not believe their eyes as they were hit by this attack while the others look on in shock as they couldn't believe it. Now, for those as well as the magic knights that were nearby were also in shock as they thought Asta had no magic whatsoever, yet he was able to literally just deflect the attack like it was nothing. At this, as Asta was there with his cool and calm bra bravado, this is when also someone else was watching him, as we see the vice captain of the Golden Dawn, which was Longerus, who was staring at Asta in a little bit of not only like extreme curiosity, surprise, confusion, but also fear. As to Longerus, it made no sense. How did this commoner, this nobody, how was he so powerful? It, and he was not even the only one. There was also the other, you know. As he was trying to, you know, con like, you know, trying to figure out everything, also it jumped down as there were still a couple of diamond mages left. So pretty much after a while of also just beating down diamond mages and saving the kingdom, we would eventually end up seeing Austin encounter Yuno, who had taken down one of his own. 
At this, he will turn to Asta as both of them would do nothing more but stare down each other. As you know, would see that Asta was no longer like the same person that he was. At this, he sees that he sees both Astas in this one version of him. As he sees that Asta has finally become like the full version of himself. Like there's not one personality and there's not like another. So pretty much it's just all Asta. It's now just one person. As he goes and smiles, he then says, "So you're finally complete, huh?" At this, also wouldn't smirk. Yeah, it took me a while to get there, but hey, at least I'm here, right? At this, um, self who was there, who's currently right now trying to get Asta's, I mean, you knows attention, would eventually be annoyed as she, of course, is you know spotting some nonsense to which Asta honestly does not care about. At this, though, this is when suddenly a small miniature, like winged, horned figure, whatever it was, would then appear on Asta's shoulder, as they would then speak, saying, "Jesus, that woman is annoying." It would say, causing Self to be, you know, shutting up instantly as she glares at the person. Well, of course, Yuno's in shock. He then says, Asta, what is that? At this, Asta would then look down as he would see Libe on his shoulder. As he would say, oh, this is my brother. Well, I would say, well, yeah, this is my brother. At this, Yuno was actually surprised at this as he would see Libe, of course, you know, you know scratch the back of his head bashfully. However, he would, of course, nod at this while Yuno was in confusion. At this, Sylph and Libe would actually begin to argue, with Sylph pretty much asking Libe who the hell he was and that his his host was not better than you know. to which Libe would disagree, saying that Asa will walk the floor with him. So pretty much both of them were having like this back and forth conversation. I just, I don't know why I decided to tell y'all about this, but like, honestly, I just think it's really funny. But anyway, moving on, Longris would then appear as well as he was sort of just looking at Asta, to which Asta, sensing his presence once again, would then turn to him. This is the second time you had your eyes on me. Is there something you need? At this, Longer says nothing more until he speaks up, saying, How, What are you? At this, Asta will look at him as he would then begin to say that he makes no sense. He's a commoner. He's without magic. He should be no one important. Yet, look what you're doing, he would say, as he begins to show all the destruction that Asta's caused. As well as the fact that he was actually super strong. Like, it made no sense to him. At this, Asta says nothing more. He says, what I am is nothing more but a humble magic knight of the Clover Kingdom, same as you. At this, Longris couldn't believe the audacity that Asta had, but he decided to shut up as, honestly, after Asta literally, after Asta wiped out most of the troops from the Diamond Kingdom, you cannot help but understand why this man was afraid. But this is when, of course, Fenrir would then appear, as this would cause Longris to finally have an opportunity, as he begins to tell Fenrir that he must be happy, huh? That finally someone else is here to finally pick up the slack that he left off as he was a waste of space. At this, Finral says nothing more, but this is when Longris would then begin to take it too far, as he begins to insult Asta. Now, even though Asta and Finral were not like all buddy-buddy like that, Asta was still very respectful towards Finral, as well as the fact that he also, you know, helped out in the missions, helped Finral complete tasks, as Asta was still a very helping person. This will cause Finro to be angry as he begins to, you know, talk back to Longris, saying for him to, he doesn't care if he insulted him, but do not disrespect his own squad mates. As he says that even though he may not be able to beat Longris, he will help the Black Bulls reach number one. At this, Longris couldn't believe the audacity that he had, while Austin actually looks at Finro with a smile as well as some respect. At this, as Longris sees this, he's just thinking, how? How did this? How did he? As he can only think that all of this was happening was because of Asta. And Longrest began to have a very big dislike for Asta. But with all that being said though, the threat was eventually all taken care of. As eventually after so much, the Diamond Kingdom mages were all run off or just defeated completely. And some of them were even taken for negotiation. As after that whole ordeal was done for, the Black Bulls returned back to their base as they were all finally living in peace right now. They were chilling. Asta was now not the only one taking missions as the other Black Bulls began to contribute, but mostly it was just pretty much Magna, Luck, Noel. So pretty much, yeah, all of them became like a regular squad that would go on missions. Asta would still mostly go solo, but he would sometimes go with them as well. However, seeing them all begin to like hone in on their skills and work together will actually cause influence on the other Black Bulls. For example, Gordon would actually ask Asta to train him as well, to which Asta had actually been able to understand Gordon. It was just the fact that the man seemed, well, I wouldn't say socially awkward. It was just the fact that he seems to be holding back like his voice. 
but also nonetheless still helped him so he pretty much trained uh gordon as well and this will cause finro to also be sparked up as he sees his the people he call his kohais all beginning to get better and better they become stronger than even him and then begins to make him feel down so he actually decides to speak up to asta asking him for training as well as you know saying that he doesn't want to be you know holding everyone back and he actually wants to contribute to the team to which asta would of course agree as well as just like in canon also had pretty much let a spark on all the black bulls this will cause vanessa who was actually watching all of them including finro who at this point he will still get all like you know love and like gushy like almost like sanji around woman he would he would actually you know try to refrain from actually like contacting them or anything as he would remain calm and controlled due to this vanessa was actually surprised by the changes of everyone as it actually made her feel a little bit down about herself and deciding that she had enough of it she decides to go and actually do something about it aka go to the witch's forest as she as well did not want to hold back the black bulls so she, so she decides to get professional help even though it had to be from her mother but moving on Asta would eventually end up getting a request from the Wizard King as him as well as a squad will go to a will go to the witch's forest to get the next magic stone. So it seems like the members of the Eye of the Midnight Sun, they've not been exactly on the move a lot lately due to the fact that it seems like their members were badly injured. I wonder by who? Hmm, I guess we'll never know. But moving on, due to this, Asta would then be accompanied by um, Luck. Finral, Magma, Noel, and himself, of course, as they all decide to go on this mission. As we're now moving towards the Witch Forest arc. As this is where I'm going to end this part to this what if. Hope y'all did enjoy. Yeah, I will, yeah, again, I'm sorry if I continue messing up when I speak. It's just the fact I'm sort of learning how to like slow down when I'm talking. Because I don't know why, but for some reason, whenever I'm talking, I feel like the urge to like, speed up. And whenever I speed up when talking, it causes me to mess up my words. So, yeah, there's that. But I also want to thank you guys for tuning into this What If. Like I said, do not have the best upload schedule, but I try my best to work on it. I thank you guys for your support, and thank you guys for being here, and for being with me and my channel. And besides all that, guys, it's Sage D Samurai, and I'm out. Peace, and have a wonderful day.